Hey there, my name is Guy Ferdman, and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about the dreaded F word. And no, it's not what you're thinking. I wanna to talk to you about failure. Now, most people spend their lives trying to avoid failure. You know, at some place, in some time when you were growing up, you started believing that you can only receive love in this world by having achievement. And it's because of this that this achievement usually blocks us from actually receiving our self-worth and our self-love. And oftentimes it's also why we won't take certain chances or even if we do and we experience failure, we feel very negatively about ourselves. Now look, I don't know what your beliefs are, but for me, I do believe that there is a soul and a higher self that's always in connection with this body. And if you've read books like Journey of Souls, then you know that there is a divine guidance that's constantly trying to come through into our system. And if you look at the way that your life is unfolding, it's like it's trying to always teach you a lesson. Now, if you don't learn that lesson, it's like it brings it on again and again and again, usually in harsher, more visceral ways, sometimes with sicknesses or you know deaths or different things like this. But those lessons have kind of been mulling in your space for a long time. So I always have this analogy where I say, life is kind of like this little dog that comes to bite you in the ass. You know, at first it's a chihuahua and it's trying to get your attention. You kind of smack it away and you get this chihuahua away from me, you know, and eventually it, it sounds like a Labrador, but eventually it's sending like a Doberman to just like bite you on the neck. And at that point in time, you can't run away from it and you have to deal with it, but you could have learned that lesson way before. So when it comes to failure, it's one of these things that we've learned to try to avoid again, because we think that if we fail, then we are no longer worthy of receiving love. Most human beings at their core, what is it that we're actually looking for? We want safety, we want well-being, we want connection, we want love. If you take care of those four aspects, then you're pretty much good to go. So with failure, oftentimes we feel like it takes that stuff away, but if we start really looking at human development, how it works, we are designed for failure, right? That's what we do. 99% of our lives are just course adjustments. Uh, I have a six month old child at home and he's not walking yet, but while watching human development, you quickly understand that it takes many, many, maybe thousands of repetitions for us to really learn something. When a baby is learning how to walk, it doesn't just get up and walk right away. It falls hundreds, if not thousands of times. And the reality is, is that is how we are organized to learn. So when you pick up something new for the first time and you're not great at it, this doesn't mean that you can't get great at it or that you're less skilled than somebody else or anything else like that. It just simply means that you haven't put in repetitions. There are case studies out there that show that for an elite athlete, to change some mechanical movement like a throw or a kick or anything like that, it is a minimum of 3,000 repetitions for the mind to begin to change course and transform that habit. For a person to do the same thing who's not an elite athlete, it has been shown that it takes up to 30,000 times repetitions to perform the same act. Now you can imagine an elite athlete who's running is very aware of their body, of how their toes are hitting the ground, of how to get the most force and pressure out of like every uh, step and maneuver, right? There's a skill to all these things. So somebody who's not aware of those things, of course, it's gonna take you more repetitions and more time to do that. Now, most of our minds, especially in this age, you know, we're so used to instant gratification. So we have lost patience. And if there's anything, as somebody who's taught tens of thousands of people all over the world about personal and spiritual development, if there's two things I could ask anyone to develop within their lives is patience and grace. The mind is not the most patient or graceful thing that we have, and the body is very patient and graceful, right? It will take its time and it will reveal truths to you um, in its own time, but oftentimes the mind doesn't allow for that. So when we're experiencing something like failure, what we wanna uh, bring in is this patience and grace, to be patient with ourselves uh, as we learn and be graceful with ourselves as we are messing it up because that's how we learn. Imagine a child or a parent when the child started walking and if the child fell, you're like, stop it, okay, you're just not gonna be one of these walking children, right? And the patience and grace falls out. It's, it's the exact opposite. It's like, oh, sweetheart, get up, do that again. No problem, right? Just an encouraging voice. So we want to meet our body the same way we wished our parents would have met us in all situations. Let me say this a different way. I have a belief that I believe that there's an internal child within you, it's usually in the sensory experience over here, and that there's an adult, but most of us are living in the false adult. And our spiritual path 
is actually in becoming the idealized adult that we wished our parents were. So what that means is that if you became the parent to your inner child, the way that you wished your parents would have been to you as you were growing up, and you will meet the energy in your body and the experiences that you're having with that same love and kindness and appreciation and patience and grace that you, you wished your parents would have met you with in those moments where you were traumatized or angry or felt unsafe or whatever it might be. And now as you go through life and you're experiencing failures and you're working on something and you're really wanting to get good at it, every time you're not, if you would meet it with the energy of that idealized parent and you would just come and be like, oh, sweetheart, it's okay. Don't worry, get back up, walk again and give that encouragement to yourself at the energetic level, not as just a mental game, but just meet yourself with this loving embrace. You are gonna find yourself very quickly evolving in your spiritual and personal development. And this is where most people are not moving through and give up on the things that really matter to them because instead of being that praising parent, they're the critical parent. They've actually taken on the voice of their parent and they're actually attacking themselves from within with these judgments into their system based on the same things they learned when they were kids, the same judgments that their parents, you perceive that your parents had towards you and you keep that cycle going over and over again. So if you can meet yourself with this idealized parent, if you can have this, develop this patience and grace over time and be patient and graceful with yourself, when you're not patient and graceful with yourself, you're gonna watch as many, many things transform in your life and reality reflects the frequencies as they change within your body. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you want more training videos like this, subscribe to our channel. My name is Guy Ferdman. I'm a coach and mentor here at Satori Prime and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye guys.